feet. The North Prayer Queens Club on Tuesday. And those were our sports update. Thank you very much. All right. Do you know what FIFA stands for? I don't. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. <laughs> Even the bell is okay. even the bell is disappointed. Okay. <laughs> we are leaving. Welcome to your future. You can't live without. This You're is your radio. Oh, the best internet radio station in the world. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Hello, a scholarship program okay and yeah um i'm I, i'm actually doing my form three where at e2 thing cjsf wow you should have come to the tda <laughs> the dow could be it's called radio it's called building computer and it's called it's called mechanics program we do coding man we do like the Walt disney stuff like we draw anime yeah, yeah. graphic novels you know about that yeah it's kind of like the harvard of Mutu. it's the harvard of maturity guys I'm telling you, I'm so bad. Welcome to your future. Since you can't live without, this You're is your radio. You're listening to the best internet radio station in the world. Hi everybody, my name is Kiakon Teta from the Dow Academy and I would like to welcome you all to the TDA Sport Challenge where you stand a chance to win great prizes just by keeping fit. All you need to do is post videos of your daily challenge progress on our social media pages. And you can even send some of your videos to our WhatsApp number. The challenges that we have for you are the push-up challenge and onto the push-up challenge where you'll be required to increase the number of push-ups that you do on a daily basis. On day one, we start with five, and we increase by five every day. So day one is five, day two, 10, day three, 15, and so on and so forth. The Around the World Challenge. And the Keep Yappy Challenge. We are at the Dow Academy Secondary Campus. For this challenge, you'll need a ball. And the whole aim of the challenge is to juggle the ball in the air without it touching the ground using any part of your body except for your hands. It should look something like this. Today you did 10. Tomorrow try and beat it. Try and do 10, uh, 15, try and do 20. Uh, try and do as much as you can for the end of the challenge. Now our prizes include a one-term free admission to the Dow Academy Tech Series, 50 Pula Airtime, as well as TDA merchandise. So come on everybody, let's get outside, let's get fit, and good luck to all those participating. You're listening to the best. Hello, everyone. My name is Mrs. Mtongorea. I'm the history teacher at the Dow Academy. Welcome to our program, Ask the Teacher, where you can ask questions that you have. And on this program, you also get a chance to revise. Before we get into our lesson, I just want to remind you of the covid protocols please stay safe wash your hands mask up sanitize and social distance our topic uh which is on slide one is uh the depth study germany 1918 to 1945 and our we are going to look at uh, two focus points the first one is 
how did Germany emerge from the defeat at the end of the First World War? Uh, moving on to slide two, just a short introduction. Before the armistice of 1918, uh, on November 1918, William II, the Kaiser of Germany, abdicated. Uh, for the purpose of you to hear me properly, I am going to remove my mask. Um, you find that uh, democracy was set in Germany, known as the Weimar Republic, and this democracy lasted for 14 years. Then from 1933, it was replaced by Hitler's dictatorship and the Third Ray. In Germany, you find that uh, there are three rays. The first ray was that time when the Kaiser was in control. The second ray was the time of uh, the Weimar Republic. And the third ray was Hitler's dictatorship. Uh, the third ray collapsed in 1945 when Hitler committed suicide and Germany was defeated in the Second World War. So that's the general introduction. Moving on to slide three, we now look at how did Germany emerge from the defeat at the end of the First World War. From October to November 1918, some events happened in Germany and they are known as the German Revolution. Uh, there was the naval mutiny where sailors of the Grand Fleet refused to take orders to put to sea to fight the British. Workers and soldiers took over Kiel and nearby ports. Then the socialists led in the formation of workers and soldiers councils following the Soviet model. Other cities throughout Germany joined the revolt. The Kaiser was forced to abdicate and he fled to Germany. Power was passed to the Social Democratic Party led by Frederick Ebert. Uh, we are going to continue on slide four. Uh, Ebert became the chancellor since their party was the largest in the Reichstag. And uh, the Reichstag is the German parliament. Then in a general atmosphere of chaos, they declared a republic. Ebert's first aim was to restore order and to hold democratic elections. But that was not so easy. There were a lot of extremists that wanted to overthrow the new government. Moving on to slide five. On uh, 11 November, Ebert's government signed an armistice with the Allied powers. In January 1919, Ebert's government managed to defeat the Spartacist uprising. Uh, during the 1919 election, uh, Ebert's party emerged as the biggest one in the country, and now they had to rebuild the country as a new republic. Since there were rebellions in Berlin and street fighting, they met in Weimar. That is where they set up the Weimar Republic. Then in July 1919, they approved the Republic. Uh, next, we are going to look at the Weimar Constitution. Um, remember, you can uh, call in or send your questions to the number that is appearing on your screen you can ask those questions when we finish the explanation uh getting back to the weimar constitution uh if you look at the structure that is appearing on your screens right now the german people which are at the bottom uh, were the ones who elected the president there at the top and the president then appointed the chancellor he also appointed the judges and he also controlled the armed forces. The chancellor in turn appointed the government ministers. Then the parliament was elected by the people. Then from the different states in uh, Germany, 
which were 17 uh, appointments were made for people to join the rage threat, which was the upper house in parliament as we are going to explain further as we move on. So basically that's the structure of the Weimar constitution. Slide seven will look at the different features in detail. Uh, the president was the head of the state. He appointed the chancellor, usually from the majority party in the Reichstag. He was the supreme commander of the army. Then in an emergency, he could be a dictator since he could suspend the constitution and rule by personal decree using Article 48. He was elected every seven years by all adults over the age of 20. We'll continue on slide eight, explaining the constitution. We now look at the chancellor. Uh, the chancellor chose a team of ministers and the chancellor and the ministers were responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the government. Then moving on to slide nine of the Weimar constitution which we are continuing the race threat which i talked about it was the upper house in the parliament and uh, it included representative members from the 17 provincial state parliaments then it could veto registered laws but two-thirds of the registered vote cancelled the veto it advised the chancellor on the laws that were to be passed to govern the country. Uh, moving on to slide 10. We are looking at the Reichstag now. The Reichstag, that's a German name for parliament. It was elected by all adults over 20 for a maximum of four years using a proportional representation system which we will look at as we move on. Then um, the Reichstag made the law and control taxation and the budget. Moving on to slide 11, please remember to continue sending your questions to the number that is appearing on the screen so that when we get into our second segment, you can ask those questions. We are now looking at the special features of the Weimar constitution. It had a proportional representation, uh, meaning if a party got 4% of the votes, it will also have 4% of the seats in the parliament. One advantage of this system was that it was fair, but the major disadvantage was that it wasted votes and it was difficult to get the two-thirds majority. And uh, in the end, you would find that um, coalition governments were to be formed. And uh, these coalition governments came from uh, or were made up of different parties. So it was not very easy for them to decide. And in most cases, these uh, coalitions lasted for a very short time. Another feature of the Weimar constitution um, was the use of Article 48. With the use of Article 48, you'd find that um, the president could um, actually act like a dictator because Article 48 empowered him. It gave him powers to uh, pass laws by himself without even consulting parliament. And he usually did that in um, a state of emergency. Then we move on with um, the forward-looking features of the Weimar Constitution. Um, there was equal voting rights for, okay, there were equal voting rights to women and men. Then one good thing about it was that there was freedom of speech. Uh, there was also freedom of press. Uh, then freedom from arrest without reasonable cause. Then, in some respects, Weimar Constitution was one of the most democratic in the world. 
So those were some of the features of the Weimar constitution. Now we are going to move on to our next focus point. What was the impact of the Treaty of Versailles? But let me remind you once more, if you have questions on the Weimar constitution and everything else that we have covered so far, please ask, send your questions to the number that is appearing on your screens. All right, now looking at the our second focus question, what was the impact of the Treaty of Versailles? I'm sure for most of you, you find this part uh, quite easy because the Treaty of Versailles is the first topic that we cover in this syllabus. Um, so it's more like revision again. Uh, the biggest crisis for the new republic came in May 1919 when the terms of the Treaty of Versailles were announced and nearly all Germans were furious. Nationalists accused Ebbets government of stabbing the army in the back by signing the 1918 armistice, saying Germany could have won the war. So what it simply means here is that the army was still fighting the soldiers were still in the battlefield, but Ebert and his men, uh, after being advised by the generals that there was no way that Germany could win the war, they went on and signed the armistice. So to those who were still on the battlefield and to most German people who didn't know what was actually happening in the war, that was like a stab in the back. And I uh, find that Ebert was also accused of betraying the country by signing the Treaty of Versailles. I'm sure you all still remember all the negative things, the high reparations being forced to sign the war guilt clause that made the people feel that Ebert had betrayed them by signing such a treaty. But you find that uh, even Ebert himself was very reluctant to sign the treaty, but he had no choice. Like I said, the German generals had advised that Germany would lose if it went back to war. Moving on to slide 14, uh, we are going to look at um, the economy and how it was affected by the Treaty of Versailles. You find that uh, the treaty was a big slap for Germany because of the high reparations Remember, Germany had to pay 6.6 .6 billion pounds. Then Germany had also lost territories like uh, Upen and Malmedy to Belgium, like Upper Silesia to Poland. And Germany lost resources, the Saar being put under the control of the League for 15 years, which was rich in um, natural resources which the Germans needed. Then there was also disarmament and the war guilt clause, like I mentioned earlier. Then reparations were set, set settled at 6.6 .6 billion pounds to be paid in annual installments. Then the Germans protested that this was a strain on the economy, which they were trying to rebuild after the war. And in 1922, Germany failed to pay the second installment. And I'm sure all of you remember that after failing to pay the uh, second installment, Belgium and France had to invade Germany and they took over the Rohr Valley. And they were now taking the minerals, coal and iron to pay themselves in kind after Germany had failed to pay the reparations. Uh, moving on to the next slide, we are continuing with um, how the Treaty of Versailles affected the economy of Germany. You find that um, due to the invasion of the Raw, this led to a serious crisis. The German government authorized passive resistance. Then the French expelled 100,000 Germans and killed over 100 workers. The revenue of the government fell, so the government decided to print money, and this led to hyperinflation. And with hyperinflation, 
you find that uh, because the government had just decided to print lots of money, that money was valueless to the point that for someone to go and buy a loaf of bread, they had to put the money in a wheelbarrow because that money was just useless. And for those people who had managed to save lots of money in the banks, the money which they had saved and which could have bought them a house in 1921 was worthless by 1923. So you find that uh, this hyperinflation was really bad in Germany because of the city of Versailles and the need for the Germans to pay the reparations. Now we go to our final slide. What was the Weimar government's response to the hyperinflation? Uh, in 1923, there was a huge risk that the economy and the government would collapse. Gen then Germany was saved by stressmen, I'm sure. Uh, form fours, form fives, you know, we have covered this, the, all the things that were done by stressmen to try and solve the problems that were created by hyperinflation. The first thing he did was to call off the passive resistance. Then he introduced the rent and mark. Um, so that the currency would be stabilized. Then stressmen resumed reparations and um, we find that uh, there were now initiatives which led to a period of political recovery in between 1924 and 1925. Um, so we come to the end of our first segment where we were looking at uh, how Germany emerged from the First World War. Remember guys to stay safe, wash your hands, mask up, sanitize, and social distance. Now it's time for a break. We'll continue in the next segment with the question and answer session. Bye. Last year, when I was in standard six, the school introduced a club called the Media Club. I decided to join it, then I got accepted, and that's how we came to make the future of this land. Like my grand queen mother would say, Be fearless, be like, be like your father. father. Well, in the film, I learned a lot about acting and types of shots that the camera takes. And my favorite character in the movie is Mati. The place where my father was born. A place his forefathers lived and passed on to the afterlife. Now it's just a place. I was surprised to see myself in the newspaper. This is the first time. How did your parents feel about that? My parents felt proud and happy for me. giant answers. Watching myself on the big screen, wow, that was mind-blowing. Um, I would watch some movies on the big screen, but now to see myself there is like ah. looking in the mirror and wondering who else is watching you. That was my favorite part was when I had to cup in with the magic stick and it sounded like an earthquake, I mean, a, like a lightning bolt. He brought peace amongst our people and all tribes. And then uh, my first lines, imagine a war <laughs> caused by peace. That, that, was, that was nice. Imagine a war caused by peace. But you always said peace was the end of war, not the cause of another. A hunt to kill.
Welcome back to our second segment where we are going to be looking at your questions and I'll be answering them. Remember to stay safe, wash your hands, mask up and sanitize. Yeah, this is the question and answer session and we have a few questions from our audience. Uh, the first question is from Garabo. I would say is what what were the causes of the 1918 German Revolution? What were the causes of the 1918 German Revolution? Thank you, Karabo, for your question. What were the causes of the 1918 German Revolution? All right, the major cause was that. Um, Germany at that point in time was under the rule of um, the Kaiser. It was a monarchy and it was not democratic because all the power rested in the hands of the Kaiser. And uh, at that point in time, again, you find that uh, that is the time where there was the naval blockade. So the ships that were supposed to bring food to Germany were not bringing that food. So the people of Germany were starving. So they really needed change. They needed an improvement. Then uh, because we say that um, rule under the Kaiser was not democratic, people needed the right to express themselves. They needed um, the right to vote. And um, that was about, that's about all to answer that question. Uh, another question, it's a voice note. Let's listen to it. Hi, my name is Latoya. I have a quick question here. What were the allied conditions for making peace? Thank you. Um, thank you, Latoya, for your question. What were the conditions for the allied forces for making peace. Um, at the end of the war, and when the German people it told the Kaiser to abdicate um, so that um, an armistice could be signed, the, and the Kaiser refused. The Americans and the Allied powers did not want to sign the armistice unless the uh, country, Germany, became a um, democracy and they also wanted to see an end to monarchism with the Kaiser not being there. So those were the two major conditions for Germany to become a democracy and for the Kaiser to abdicate. Thank you for that answer, ma'am. Uh, another question, it's a voice note also. Hi, I'm Gelizo. I have a question here. Um, how best can you describe the Weimar political system? Did you get that now? Um, Let me replay it. Mm -hmm. Hey, ma'am, this is Katleho. Hi, I'm Gelizo. I have a question here. Um, how best can you describe the Weimar political system? Thank you, Kelly. So for your question, how best can you describe the Weimar political system? Uh, the Weimar political system was basically very democratic. If you remember when I was explaining on the slides, I said uh, it was one of the democratic um one of the most democratic constitutions in the world which allowed everyone from the age of 20 to vote men and women were allowed to vote for a person of their choice a president of their choice and people could not be arrested uh without um fair, they were given fair trial so everything now was um, quite democratic. People were free. There was freedom of choice under the Vima government. Thank you, Mayor Slim. Do you have any questions on Facebook? Let's go to 
a question from Facebook. Uh, we have a question from Facebook here saying, what impact did Strassman have in the Weimar Republic? What impact did Strassman have in the Weimar Republic? Uh, thank you so much for that question. What uh, effect did Strassman have on the Weimar Republic? Uh, to answer that question, you have to uh, divide your answer into four you look at uh, what Stressman did politically, what he did economically, what he did uh, culturally, and what he did in foreign affairs. Uh, politically, you find that uh, during the time when Stressman was in power, um, the political scene was quite stable. There were no um revolutions and there were no threats of revolutions and uh, it came from the fact that um we move on to the economic part uh stressman had managed to uh get loans from um america in the doors plan and um reparations were now a bit relaxed they were given a longer term to pay for the reparations and you find that how uh, with Stressman now, he used that, that money to make improvements in Germany. Um, roads were constructed, new apartments were built, and you find that uh, as those projects were taking place, it also meant that uh, people were becoming employed. So Stressman was able to reduce the high number of uh, unemployed people that were there in Germany. Uh, um, which had been caused by the invasion of the raw and hyperinflation. So with the loans, people were employed and the standard of living in Germany at that point in time was much better. Then we move on to um, the cultural scene. You find that uh, in Germany, under stressmen, um, Germany can be viewed as a, uh, going or it was going through the golden years in the 1920s because um there were many painters uh artists were drawing and um there were many films with um one main actor um, marlene detrick who became well known worldwide so you'd find that um and architecture also improved during our stressman's time. So culturally, you find that um, the 1920s under stressmen were quite vibrant. So, uh, stressmen did quite a lot in that area. Then uh, looking at the foreign affairs, um, stressmen also scored quite a number of successes. Uh, the first one was the signing of the Locano treaties with the local cities, um, Germany or Stressman, or, sorry, Germany, yes, was agreeing to recognize the borders between Germany and Belgium and France. And you find that with that move, with the signing of the local treaties in 1925, it enabled Germany to be admitted into the League of Nations in 1926. And that was quite an achievement and it all came about as a result of the role played by stressmen so you'd find that um under stressmen there were quite a number of achievements but looking at that question also you can also you should also look at the negative side all those things had negative sides like uh, economically yes Germany was receiving loans from America, but it meant that those loans had to be taken back. So if such a question comes on part C in your paper one depth study, and they can say to what extent was Stressman successful, you can say, yes, he was successful. He acquired the loans, but however, those loans had to be paid back. Then if we look at the political scene, you would find that, yes, during Stressman's era, there was stability, 
but you also find that um, that was the same time that Hitler was starting to make sure that uh, with his Nazis, the next time that they were going to try and take power, they were going to use the legal way. Even the communists, they were also still trying to take power from the Weimar Republic. So there was a, however, they then culturally, like I said, there was um, the images or film stars like Marlin. You would find that um, when um, Marlin, when uh, the film producers were trying to um, advertise their films, Marlin could uh, be seen on posters, not completely covered. And to the people in the rural areas, that looked like a moral decay so you can also say that however yes culturally they were successful but it led to decadence so that's um the however part that you can look at we have another one from facebook we have another question from facebook it says was Strassman able to get the german people on the weimar's government side was Strassmann able to get the German people on the Weimar government side? Thank you for that question. Was Strassmann able to get people on the Weimar Republic's side? From uh, I think this question can be linked to what I was just explaining. He really did manage to get the people of Germany on um, the Weimar Republic's side because um, he managed to give them something to do. He managed to improve Germany economically culturally and he also managed to put germany back on the international map where they were admitted into the league of nations uh that's one from facebook it says can the high amount of repatriations be blamed for germany printing high amounts of money one last time can the high amount of repatriations be blamed for germany printing high amounts of money Thank you for the question. Can the high amounts of reparations be blamed on Germany's printing of more money? I can say yes, it did, because you find that um, for Germany to print um, those um, notes, high amounts of money, it came from um, the invasion of the raw, and the invasion of the raw was caused by the fact that Germany had failed to pay reparations. So they invaded the raw. German government called for passive resistance, but with passive resistance, workers still needed to be paid. So in order to pay the workers who had not worked, the German government had to print lots and lots of money. So you find that um, that led to hyperinflation. So uh, that's why I'm saying the answer is yes. all right uh we are now going to take another break then now uh, when we come back we are going to recap remember to stay safe sanitize and mask up i got the role i think i got the role because of my martial arts i knew karate went to karate school and i tried to fit in so that I can do more exercises and be able to get that. In Botswana here, I know that we have a low population. So what I want is that the children should be inspired and it should go to other countries to show that the children, they, no matter how young they are, they can do well in their lives. Another kind of people worth saving. Like in watch India TV, we always see Studio Universal movies. I want our movies to also be shown on Studio Universal and be proud of ourselves as Batwan. A hunt to kill.
hunt to kill. Hi everybody, my name is Kiakon Teta from the Dao Academy and I would like to welcome you all to the TDA Sport Challenge where you stand a chance to win great prizes just by keeping fit. All you need to do is post videos of your daily challenge progress on our social media pages. You can even send some of your videos to our WhatsApp number. The challenges that we have for you are the push-up challenge and onto the push-up challenge where you'll be required to increase the number of push-ups that you do on a daily basis. On day one, we start with five, and we increase by five every day. So day one is five, day two, 10, day three, 15, and so on and so forth. The Around the World Challenge. And the Keep Yappy Challenge. We are at the Dow Academy Secondary Campus. For this challenge, you'll need a ball. And the whole aim of the challenge is to juggle the ball in the air without it touching the ground using any part of your body except for your hands. It should look something like this. Today you did 10. Tomorrow try and beat it. Try and do 10, uh, 15, try and do 20. Uh, try and do as much as you can for the end of the challenge. And our prizes include a one-term free admission to the Dow Academy Tech Series, 50 Pula Airtime, as well as TDA merchandise. So come on everybody, let's get outside, let's get fit, and good luck to all those participating. Oh, did the president play? What role did the chancellor play? And what were some of the positive features of the Weimar constitution, like the freedom to vote, freedom of expression, freedom given to both men and women over the age of 20? Then uh, you should also know the impact of the Treaty of Versailles how it caused problems in Germany. Since Germany had lost territories, Germany was made to pay high reparations. We have covered that in some of the questions that you were um, asking. So please make sure you revise and you prepare for the depth study. And when you are preparing for your depth study, Please make sure that uh, in paper one, when you are given three questions, the first question, which carries four marks, just remember to state any four points, 
for you to get the four marks. Then part B of the question, always remember to explain two reasons for you to get six marks. Then for part C, um, you have to look at both sides of the question. Like we can use the example that we just used now. Um, do you think that um, the payment of reparations caused problems in Germany? You can say yes, then you support. Then you can say, however, there were also other causes or for problems in germany then you can look at two points so part c for you to get all the 10 marks you have to look at three points and you have to make sure that your answer is balanced one point to support two points on the however part then make sure you conclude then since this topic is the one that is also used for paper four Always make sure that um, you really understand what the question wants you to do. Then make sure you put an introduction. Then you link your answer to the question. You write the first paragraph, link it to the question. Second paragraph, link everything to the question so that you make sure that you are answering the question. And make sure that your answer also is balanced. Support whatever the question is asking you, like the one we are saying, where the reparations, the causes of problems in Germany, yes, they were, but there were also other causes, like um, the war guilt, the signing of the war guilt clause, um, the disarmament clause, and make sure you support giving full examples, and at the end, make sure you summarize your question. I think for now, that is all. Remember to stay safe, guys. Wash your hands, mask up, sanitize, social distance. Tomorrow, there will be another teacher on the same program. Ask your teacher. For now, thank you so much for watching and bye. You are listening to only the best internet radio station in the world.